Brilliant. Joe? <laughs> hey, hey. Finally, yeah. Finally we're meeting up. This yeah. is awesome. So you're the Jackie Chan, huh? I just found oh. that out this morning. <laughs> Yes, that's my, my Asian colleagues uh, uh, did this kind of animation type of a thing that uh, they designated me as, as the Jackie Chan of photography, which is a stretch. Well, <laughs> a hey, stretch. whatever communicates. Right? You know, it was, it was fun. It was definitely fun. The, the guy who did the, um, the animation, it, it was actually pretty cool and kind of fun to watch him put it together. Cool. All right, so what is your passion when it comes to photography? Um, everything. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, I, I've always loved being a photographer. I love it more now even than when I was back in school, you know, which is a long time ago now. And it's not even a sense of, you know, my own mortality or anything like that. I think it's a, uh, a realization of how precious and how finite the time is behind the lens, yeah. which is what you live for. Given the nature of photography now, um, things are happening faster, budgets are tighter, your uh, play time in the field, if you will, is shorter, even for big magazines like the National Geographic. So I really come to value that time because an awful lot of effort, energy, time, money, and all that sort of stuff funnels down to literally, you know, 125th of a second. Right. You do a lot of crazy stuff hanging out of helicopters and stuff. We do a fair amount, yeah. I mean, it's about getting your camera in a different place, which I've kind of talked about a little bit. Sometimes, you know, the world is very much photographed. It's seen, you know, in its totality, pretty much. Or you always think that there's nothing new in the world. But there could be a fillip of difference that you can introduce to a scene simply by trying a new angle or getting your camera in an unusual position. Sometimes it takes more effort than others. Well, the one I saw that really knocked me out was the one over the Hollywood sign. Okay, Tell all me right. about that shoot. Well, that actually, all credit to the daring and trusting uh, level of rapport um, with Michelle Yeoh. Uh, she is a stunt actress. In addition to being a fine dramatic actress, she was trained in the martial arts. She was a ballet dancer. She has this phenomenal physicality, if you will. And so when I approached her to do that shot, her agent said, no way, you know. And she called back up and said, yeah, I'll do it, you know. And, uh, I mean, it's... Like, it looks scary dangerous, and it could be, you know, obviously, but uh, dangling on a wire 500 feet uh, un in the air underneath a moving helicopter, yeah, maybe not everybody's cup of tea. I was completely comfortable, as was she. Um, in fact, when we tested the rigging out, uh, they were thinking, maybe we'll put her on one wire, and but she was so active on the wire, they said, no, no, she's getting two wires, because um, she was doing graceful things, beautiful things and I'm up there just hanging there like a sack of potatoes, you know, uh, trying to make these pictures. And it was a big effort. It cost the National Geographic. Hang on. Is that, is that going to yeah. kill your audio? Yeah. Thank you for stopping. <laughs> I don't want to stop you midway. Yeah. So, so she called back and said, yeah, she would do it. And she's very physical. She's very daring. You know, she had been in Jackie Chan movies, you know, really? as a stunt, uh, you know, actress. And she had also been a Bond girl, and she does a lot of her own stunt work on the film. So um, she was willing. Uh, we tested out the wires. Uh, we went flying. It was a shot that cost the National Geographic probably the better part of $20,000. Stunt helicopter, pilot, rigger, all that sort of stuff, test flights. We had to indemnify the entire city of Los Angeles, pretty much, you know, because I was shooting uh, film at the time, you know, and you drop a roll of film up there, you know. Uh, not that there was anybody underneath of us, it's just woods and forest, but, yeah. you know, you have to be careful about this stuff. So we had to establish a temporary helicopter base in the Hollywood Hills. Lots of stuff go into a shot like that. So when you are up there, I think probably we flew for about a half an hour, okay. and then we landed again. So. Months of planning went into a half an hour of shooting time. That's a good example of, of kind of some of the things that I've, I've done anyway. Not bad. So. You've been at this for a while. Mm -hmm. you got a lot of stuff in your toolkit. Yeah. Can you kind of give us an idea, what are the key elements, the key things that you use every time you pick up a camera or even before you pick one up? Well, there is a bit of a mental process. I think there's a mental rigor that comes along with having done this a long time and that I urge young photographers to go through to uh, imagine the job, to pre-visualize the job, think your way into it, don't be afraid of your imagination, wrap yourself around it. Also, it's important to um, not just do jobs that are money-driven. Also, make sure you find yourself an area of assigning or self-assigning that is propelled by the sheer love of the image that you think you're going to get. You know, that drive always has to be there. 
So all of that comes, comes into play. And when I go out on assignment, I do have a mental checklist, you know, of things. Have I done my research? You know, what are the, the uh, prevailing conditions where we are going to? What am I likely to get into? Backstop yourself with, uh, with equipment and, and uh, redundant equipment in case something goes wrong. All those sorts of safeguard actions that you take just instinctually, you know, after having, you know, experienced things that have gone really wrong, you yeah. know, over time. Um, the, uh, and then when you get on the field, in the field, first and foremost, before you take your camera out of the bag, uh, and this is about people, you know, because I am a people photographer, I'm not a still life guy, um, is uh, human relations. Make sure you walk in and you are um, a decent human being, that you are approachable, that you are honest with people, that you're direct, that you relate to them, and that you understand that the process of taking pictures of them could produce you know, a certain vulnerability on their part, that it's kind of scary to get in front of someone's lens. It might be scary to have, with the idea of being in a national magazine. Uh, all those kinds of things. First and foremost, when you're on location, you gotta deal with the humanity of the situation and build some sort of rapport uh, before you take those cameras out of the bag even. Gotcha. Joe, thanks for joining us on Advancing sure. Your Photography. All right, thank really you. Really great to hear your take on everything. Appreciate it, thank you very much. Terrific. Okay, all right. All right. Can we, uh... Be sure to subscribe to our blog now to stay updated on my show, and we'll give you tips and insight to keep advancing your photography. Also check out our guests' website for a closer look at their work. Tune in to our next episode of Advancing Your Photography for an inside look at another photographer's world. Until then, this is Mark Silber reminding you to get out and capture your own images of life. <laughs>